Okay, I think this thing is recording. And uh, I just wanted to continue. <clears throat> I'm, I'm doing a series of Bible studies that I'm just focusing on Jesus. And this particular Bible study is going to, we're going to start off just talking about Jesus is the only way to salvation. And when you say that in our world today, there are a number of people that are going to say, well, we're narrow minded and other things because we're saying that Jesus is the only way. I've got uh, this movie program software, and so I'm going to try something a little different with this second one. I'm going <clears> to <throat> include, so I'm going to work with that program after I do this, because I'm going to insert a video <clears throat> of a couple of uh, popular preachers and what, what they're saying. But in Matthew 7 and 14, <clears throat> He says, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. And this video that's going to come right after this, and I'm going to insert later, it, uh, the TV, whatever, you know, popular preacher, says, uh, wide is the way. But the Bible says, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard. You know, not only is it narrow, it says it's hard. And I think most people have a tendency to want an easier, softer way. I think that's true. I, you know, I, people, uh, people make money off of others by offering a, an easy way to make money. There's a lot of stuff online, you know. Send me $19 or whatever. It's usually just not a big amount. And I'll show you how I got rich. And... Sadly, you know, people keep falling for this. It's like they're they're playing the lottery, and they 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 know they've already been you know burned on another deal like that, and they're just hoping you know hoping against hope that there's this mysterious secret out there that's going to make them money. And if anybody really has that, uh, number one, they're not going to sell it. Okay, they're not. Even, it's gonna, they're going to keep it a secret if they really have something. Or they're really good. it's going to come at a really big price because you get what you pay for. If somebody's really offering a program, and there's there's some things out there that uh, in uh, I used to uh, trade commodities at the Chicago Board of Trade many years ago, and and there were some legitimate courses offered on how to trade, and uh, they were expensive. Uh, and then there were the, of course, the get-rich-quick, cheap stuff. You know, people fall for it all the time because they want a softer, easier way. And we want a softer, easier way in Christianity. We don't want to pay the price. Jesus says uh, we've got to give up our life. We've got to lose our life to gain it. And he means exactly that. Jesus also said, you know, if I forgot the exact wording, but, you know, cut off your hand cut off your limbs or something like that if if they're going to send you to hell. I mean, and people say, well, you know, it's not literal. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is literal. You know, I think uh, I think a lot of the Bible is very literal. So, you know, people want to say it doesn't really mean that or whatever because they just don't want to buckle down and, and have to deal with the real deal on the thing. <clears throat> Jesus said in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And that's everything I'm going to try to do with that video program is put up these verses on the screen. So we'll see how all this comes out. I'm working at it. And in uh, John 8, 24, he says, For unless you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. The Apostle Peter echoed these words, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts 4.12. No other name under heaven. Uh, I read a book by Liguori. You can look that up online. I forgot the first name. I think it's Francis Liguori. 
I'm not sure about that. It's L U G it's an Italian name. L oh, I'd have to look it up. Lugori. Maybe I'll put that up on the screen too. Well anyway, he wrote a book called The Glories of Mary, and he says in that book that salvation is through Mary. Well, you know, some things things can sound good to us and but they're just they're, 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 that's not what the Bible says and then and, and that's another uh, Bible say I'm gonna do at some point it might be a two or three part because I don't want these to be very long in fact I need to check the time right now I don't want to run too long because I know people don't want to sit and listen too long to stuff but you know something can sound really good by our own reasoning and but it's just not the truth so what's the authority for truth? And then that's that's where we get into a big thing. And, you know, is the Bible our sole source of authority? Well, there's one side that says, you know, that, that, that cause, it's called sola scriptura, I think. And they say, you know, the Bible is it. And then there's another group that says uh, it's tradition and Bible combined. So which is it? That's quite a interesting study, and I, w I was going to talk about that actually right in here because I was thinking, well, you know, we need to kind of just start at a very foundational point on these studies because, you know, but that's an involved, that gets pretty involved, and I want to do a, a good job on that. On any of these videos that I'm doing, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what I honestly think and believe sometimes I don't have I don't have a real set belief you know this, I think we're all uh, snapshots in time I mean you know what I believe today I, I was in what I believed five years ago because I read the Bible and I changed about you know some of the things I didn't really think were that big a deal five years ago today I think they're a big deal I that one way that you know you have God, I'll just tell you this right now, the whole you have the Holy Spirit, which we know. If you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit convicts you of sin. Convicts you. There's a conviction. You're grieved by sin. You're you you're grieved by your own sin to the point that you will change your behavior you know people can know that lying is wrong lying, let's say lying and stealing but they go ahead they, but they don't think they're wrong to the point that they'll stop doing it you know lying is just in their toolbox you know I'm, they don't lie so much until they need to lie you know and when they need to get out of trouble or they need to gain advantage well then they'll reach into the toolbox and lying is one of the tools it's okay to lie if we have the Holy Spirit of God we will uh, we'll do the right thing and you know that's the test right there because you know if if we can tell this lie or, or do something you know contrary to God and gain money at that mo moment in time maybe big money you know, do we do the, do we do the right thing? Because if we know we tell the truth, right at that place, we know we're not going to get that money. So do we tell the truth and not get the money, or do we go ahead and say, well, you know? And sometimes, you know, people think the end justifies the means. They say, well, I really need the money to do this and this, and you know, someone, I'm going to do a lot of good with this money, and so it's okay to lie because the greater good. Well, a lot of Christians have been killed in history, whether we realize it or not. If you study history, the Jews were killed by the Nazis and the Islam Muslims are, have been killing people throughout history because they think, you know, there's this greater good involved, even if they probably, I think, I, I, it just seems to me that people have to know at some level, somewhere, that killing other people isn't okay especially innocent you know women and children especially that I mean how do you know but they think you know that's some pretty amazing stuff right there it just shows how really dark you know we cannot trust our hearts the Bible says 
that the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And I don't have the verse for that. You know, sometimes I'm just going to tell you what the Bible says. I, I, I have a lot of Bible, and maybe not a lot, but I have Bible in my head. I don't know where it is. I, I want to get a, I've got this tablet, and I want to get a concordance program. Pastor Edwin's got one of those. So anyway, I'm going into some rabbit trails here. Uh, St. Paul said, There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy 2 and 5. So it's the, you know, united testimony of the people. And this is how I look at it. This is how I look at it. Paul was, well, he wasn't one of the original apostles with Jesus, but he had an encounter with Jesus. We believe that or not believe it. That's what he's saying happened. Uh, well, likely he did because he was persecuting Christians and, and responsible for their deaths uh, as a member of the old Jewish, uh, you know, religion. And, and uh, something happened. He changed. So he either ate some magic mushrooms, you know, and had a trip and changed or, or, or what he said really happened, you know. And that's another thing I'll just bring up. I guess I'm going to rabbit trail a lot on these Bible studies, but one of the things that caused me to stand up and take notice, because I, I examined Christianity and Jesus and the Bible, you know, do I want to believe this? Do I really want to believe this? And one of the things that stood out to me was, you know, everybody ran away when Jesus was being killed, which is understandable. Who wants to get crucified, <laughs> you know? So they scattered, and then we see them come back. And the Bible tells us that Jesus appeared to them. And they came back with this, you know, intense fervor and enthusiasm and, you know, preaching everywhere. Well, what happened to cause them from running away? You know, if Jesus, this is, to, for me, this is really strong evidence that the Bible, what the Bible says happened because if Jesus just died and he didn't rise again, which is what a lot of, a lot of people want us to believe, that had been the end of it, right? I mean, would these people who had been around him suddenly reemerge? I mean, why would, you know, they already proved they didn't want to be crucified for this new religion. But yet they came back and each one of them did die, with the exception, I believe, John was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. And uh, but they boiled him in oil first, and he didn't die. And I think they got a little spooked out and didn't want to, you know, they said, well, let's just, let's just get rid of this guy, you know. So something happened, and the Bible tells us what happened. And, and given, you know, what I know about human behavior and nature, and you know, I believe it. Who's going to die for something? You know, if he died and didn't rise again, are you going to come back and die for that? No, you're not going to die for that. And these early preachers, apostles, disciples, and the early church, you know, they weren't like so many people today. They weren't preaching for money and living the high life. They lived simple lives. And the leaders were led simple lives too. Not saying people can't have money. I'm not saying that. And you can, you know, it's fine. You can even be rich. But... They weren't, certainly weren't using religion to gain riches. They were giving people. If they, if they were wealthy, they, they helped others. So people object to this idea that, you know, Jesus is the only way. We have that today. And there's a, you know, all, there's been an ecumenical movement for a long time, really. And I read, I saw an interesting website just tonight where uh, one Catholic group is really heavily criticizing the current Pope and the last few Popes. They said, now I don't know how many people they represent, but they have a nicely laid out website and they said that uh, they haven't had a real Pope since 1958. And they're against the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope moved towards ecumenic, ecumenicism and and mixing with the evangelicals and all that they're they're saying they're in, they're saying that they should insist that they convert to the true mother church they believe that 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 uh, 
Roman Catholic Church is the church that Jesus founded on Peter and there's a succession of popes and that the popes have uh, the authority, all authority, even over the Bible. As I understand it, I've been studying the Catholics for about five years and I'm not bashing the Catholics, so don't take it that way. I'm really not. I'm just presenting and I'll do that in my Bible studies and, 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 and I'll touch on other religions too. Mormonism and Seventh-day Adventists and other but I'm just gonna state the facts I'm not gonna pile on with you know some emotional thing and I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna bend uh, the information either you know Protestants are guilty of bending and twisting too just you know to make their point and I don't want to do that I like to show both sides I've I've been greatly helped really by reading I've read quite a bit of Catholic literature and some of it's very good about God, about Jesus, about a lot of things. But we have a fundamental, we have a disagreement about tradition in the Bible, and I'm going to cover that in a, in a Bible uh, study, like I said. So they're not tolerant of us calling us narrow minded people, and there's this big tolerance movement, and you know, that, that's kind of all blended in with this ecumenicism also. And, you know, the, the problem I see there, or one problem, is the hypocrisy because, you know, they're tolerant of everybody except the people that we believe in this narrow way and Jesus is the only way. They're not tolerant of us. So, I mean, if they really were true to their doctrine, if you want to call it that, they'd be even tolerant of us, but they many times they're pretty pretty mean-spirited towards us and we shouldn't be mean-spirited to other people we really shouldn't where well, I think a lot of us are guilty of that I've been guilty of that I probably do it again I'm gonna try not to do that because that's not really what we want to do let's just present the truth if we have the truth and the way and the way to have the truth is to study and then just just state the truth you know if it's if it's true then it's you know stands on its own. We, we really shouldn't uh, and I've even seen that on my Facebook page where people you know I've made some reference to the Catholic and, and usually not antagonistic and just something and incidental and some people will just pile on with a lot of stuff about the Catholics and that's not really you know good but if, if we just calmly state the truth, and, they, and I, I've seen Catholic and Protestant people in, in groups on Facebook, two or three groups where they're debating all of this, and you know, the language on both sides, and, and, and uh, insult and, and, and disrespectful, both sides, both sides. I mean, that's just people, and we want to rise above that and, and just deliver the deliver the truth and how do we know what is truth you know I think wasn't it Pilate that asked Jesus who what is truth and Jesus says I am the truth so see there you go back again to Jesus and that's what we're talking about but all of this information about Jesus is in the Bible so I get a little concerned or greatly concerned when people or groups or churches undermine the Bible because now where does that end I mean okay well the Bible's not if the Bible's not our authority well what's going on I mean we're we just kind of pick and choose like a all-you-can-eat buffet I'll take the mashed potatoes and corn you know and meatloaf and, and the salad over here and somebody else is going to take the chicken and, and the jello I mean you see what I'm saying? I mean, it gets kind of sticky. I mean, we need to, re you got to think through these things. And so I'm, I'm really, for, from where I'm at, I just think it's a very dangerous thing to minimize or marginalize the Bible because that's when we get into just a lot of stuff. And then it just gets, you know, and, and the way people are, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And we see what's going on in our world today. This, this, and the Bible says there'd be a great falling away. 
and I'm 56 years old, and I, I, and I know people my age and older, and even a little younger than me, have seen it in our lifetime, just this really big change in what's on TV, and in the media, and the radio, and all that, because people don't hold up uh, an absolute authority. You know, everything is just, is, you know, gray area. You, you're okay, I'm okay, situational ethics. I mean, the 60s and, 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 that, and that time period just flooded with all kinds of stuff. Timothy Leary and the LSD people, and I mean, just on and on and on. All of these, all of these uh, psychology, you know, liberal humanism in our colleges. And you just have this erosion of a standard. Jesus' earliest disciples tell us that he claimed to be the one and only path to God. He said, if you don't follow me, you will not be in the kingdom of God. <coughs> Matthew 7, 26 and 27. If you reject me, you will not be with me in eternity. Matthew 10, 32 through 33. Jesus said that God has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. John 5, 33. Jesus claimed to be the exclusive means of truth and salvation. People who reject him are also rejecting God because God is just like Jesus. That's in John 10, 32, uh, or John 5, 32 through John 5, 32 through 33. I am the light of the world, he said, John 8, 12. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well, John 14, 6 through 7. So Jesus is saying, you know, so that's the thing, you know, the Muslims say, well, Jesus was a prophet of God. Well, no, they don't really believe that because they don't believe Jesus. You see what I mean? And we're all faced with that. You know, Jesus is saying... And that's, I think, one of the main reasons they killed him, because he was saying what he said, you know. Uh, so we're faced with that. You know, you can't say, well, Jesus was a good guy, and Jesus, Jesus, was, a, Jesus was a great teacher, and, you know, all the things people say, because they want to look good, saying something good about Jesus, but they don't really want to follow him, you know. So, you know, you're going to have to just say, I don't believe him. He, I think he was lying. Because if you don't follow Jesus, that's really what you're saying, aren't you? I mean, if you don't follow what he says, then you don't believe him. Peter was blunt when he told the Jewish leader, Salvation is found in no one else, and there's no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 in Colossians 1, 20-22, it is through Christ that all the world is reconciled to God. Paul told the people that their religion was worthless in Acts 14, 15. And in Hebrews chapter 10, 11, he says, Christ is not just better than other paths, he is, he is effective, whereas they are not. It's an all or nothing difference. And then we're saved by believing in Jesus. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, there you have it. I mean, believe it or not, believe it. Jesus is the way. He is the way, or he's not the way. It's, there's, Jesus himself doesn't leave you any room to put him somewhere else, on, you know, in some in-between place. So we had to make up our minds, you know. What are we going to believe? And talking about that, you know, the idea of our faith and belief, I just wanted to bring up something about fulfilled prophecies concerning Jesus. Now, a prophecy is something where somebody says that something's going to happen, and it happens. So let's say I say the... SM Mall out here in Cebu. I was trying to think of a place in the United States. Let me find. One. Okay, if I say you know, it's going to be a, a plane is going to crash into Disneyland on December 26 this year at 8 p.m. If I say that, 
and on December 26 a plane crashes into Disneyland you're gonna say wow well now that's what we're looking at in the Bible we're looking at people that have really studied this I haven't I'm it's one of the things I work on studying but we need to understand that these prophecies concerning Jesus were written hundreds and hundreds of years before he arrived on the scene and yet they accurately prophesied about him. It's amazing really with all of the prophecies that he fulfilled that the Jews didn't you know recognize that he was the Messiah. There's I've got a list here and I think I'll just uh, maybe I'll put them in the comments under this video I think I'll do that I got 29 here I'll just talk about a couple here. I'll just list. He said he would be born of a virgin and I say a virgin in Isaiah 7:14 and then we see that in Matthew 1:18. He would be from the tribe of Judah, Genesis 49:10. He would be of King David's seed, Jeremiah 23:5. He would be born in Bethlehem, Micah 5:2. He would teach with parables, Psalm 78:2. He would be preceded by a messenger, Isaiah 40 verse 3. So we got all of these. Uh, it says he'd be betrayed by a friend. I'm just trying to find the one here. It says where he it says he'd be spit upon and beaten. It said he would be silent before his accusers. There's one that says he'll be buried with the rich. Oh, it says he would be buried in a rich man's tomb, Isaiah 53 9. So I'll just leave those in the comment section underneath this video and people need to really stop and think about that uh, prophecy fulfilled you know and there's the prophet you know one thing about prophecy I see people into prophecy quite a bit and you know people like to sell books and make money a lot of the prophecy I've been studying prophecy part-time and a lot of prophecies already been fulfilled we're getting really close to the return of Jesus Christ. I believe that. And whether that's the case or not, we're all going to die. Nobody gets out of here alive. You know, a hundred years ago, what is this, 2014, almost 2015? A hundred years ago was 1914. Is anybody alive today that was born before 1900? Maybe a couple people. Everybody's dead. Everybody born in 1850 or whatever is they're dead. You know, we're all going to die. And sometimes people die pretty young. People die as infants. That's the reality, you know. And we need to think about that and stop and think. You no, know, there's no guarantee till tomorrow I mean we had an earthquake here and there was some people standing outside the fish market you know on their cell phones texting and this the concrete just fell on them and crushed them you know I'm sure when they got up that morning they didn't say oh today I'm gonna die you know we need to be ready to go we really need to be ready to go and get serious serious about uh, our walk and one way to do that is, is really read the Bible and understand what Jesus is saying and like I said focus on Jesus and the knowledge of Jesus and that gives us a really strong foundation to go on and, and do other things and then to practice practice living doing what he said to do so I guess I'll wrap this one up for right now. We just kind of went over uh, Jesus is the, uh, the way. And I know I ramble a little bit. I'll, I'll look at this and I'm going to put in a little video towards the front and I'll see how it goes. I'd like to make these videos so you guys, people that do watch and maybe some supporters of Hope House, whatever, I'd like you to get to know me better. I think that would be one way through these videos. And... Uh, people sometimes wonder you know what's your religion and everything well my religion is pretty pretty simple I mean I just I'm learning and I just get it from the Bible and I know 
I know that irritates some people because they, they have a different opinion of that. I will say this. I do think that you a person can be inspired by God and write something inspired even today. And even all throughout history. I, I've read writings from different people that I, I feel like they were inspired. I mean, they were just really pretty amazing, you know, things they said. And But if it's from God, it's not going to contradict the Bible. It's not going to contradict clear things. Things that are clear. Jesus gives a command to do such and such, you know, and then we're going to turn around and overturn that. That's not from God. So when we say tradition and the Bible, well, we need to be careful because, you know, if the tradition, and we have to understand something else about it, if the tradition overturns what the Bible says, then I think that's cause for concern because the people who wrote the Bible were right next to Jesus. You know, that that's what I it's what I call the original, you know, not the copy, not the Xerox. It's the original. So I think we should pay really you know, that's who I'm gonna go with. I'll just put it that way. You know, I'm not gonna go with somebody who wrote something three hundred, four hundred, a thousand, twelve hundred years later, if it contradicts what, what the original guy said. I'm just not gonna do it. That's just me. Tradition or no tradition. You know, that's it. The other thing about tradition is people, when you say tradition, they think, they think, you know, something. Well, there are claims that traditions go all the way back to the original apostles, oral tradition. But yet, we see, you know, practices put into place a thousand years later or, or something decreed officially 1,800 years later. Well, if it was direct from the apostles, why did it take so long to implement it? You see what I'm saying? I mean, it's... I see this evolution going on in, in traditions that, you know, there's this just constant, you know, changes. And that it's, it's a concern for me. I'm just, I'm concerned about it. I'm con and that's how I want to word it. I don't want to, I don't want to say it in a mean way. And, oh, well, you know, oh, well, you're, you do this and this and you're going to go to hell. And, you know, I don't, that's not what I want to say at all. I want to, I just want us to think, you know, really think. And study, we can study on our own, and history's documented. A lot of history is out there documented, and, and the Internet's an amazing place, and we, you can see for yourself. That's what I've been doing, and I'm just relating to you what I have found. So that's how my stand on, you know, tradition is it, it should agree with the written word of God, the Bible. Doesn't I mean doesn't that make sense? I mean, is that unreasonable? Is that crazy? You guys have a good day or evening wherever you're at and uh, I'm gonna edit this.